Good morning, professor and class. Today I am going to present to you the airless basketball. Rather than being inflated, airless Gen 1 relies on a 3D printed high impact thermoplastic elastomeric polymer lattice structure. The basketball nearly fits the performance expectations of a regular basketball, including its weight, size, and rebound. The form of the ball features eight panel-like lobes and a familiar seam structure, with hexagonal holes across the surface, allowing air to pass through freely. This is a picture of the 3D model that I made using Tinkercad. I used the shapes of a sphere, cubes, and hexagons to try to remake the 3D model of Wilson's Ernest Basketball. Due to the ability to melt thermoplastic elastomers at high temperatures, these materials can be simply shaped into desired products using traditional thermoplastic processing equipment. This is directly related to some of the mechanical properties studied in the material sciences class, such as strength and elasticity. Here we can see the comparison of elastic moduli and tensile strength of various materials that we saw in class. Nadine Lipa, Wilson's innovation manager, says the early effort was about fin finding the right materials with high energy return that also featured durability. It took several years for the engineers at Wilson Labs in Chicago to create the right combination. The final choice features a laser-centered powder of a proprietary custom elastomeric polymer material suited specifically for the basketball's needs. Additionally, engineers added holes to the channels, which speeds the manufacturing and post-processing timeframe. Kevin Krisiak, Wilson's product manager, says eventually increased interest could push the technology more widespread and help reduce the costs of production and materials. Wilson's hope is that by pushing against the norm and showing interest in 3D printed airless balls, would eliminate the biggest pain point in all of ball manufacturing, air retention. It will drive the industry towards embracing new technologies. Wilson collaborated with manufacturing company EOS to produce the ball, which was made using the selective laser sintering method of additive manufacturing. This method involves using lasers to fuse layers of polymer powder into the 3D design, which was then removed from the surrounding excess powder, sealed and then dyed. The SLS process involves the use of high-power laser to selectively fuse particles of polymer powder according to computer instructions. Starting at the bottom of the part, an SLS machine centers each layer in succession, with the build platform lowering incrementally to move from one layer to the next. Then, an operator takes the parts out of the machine and removes any excess powder, either manually or using a depowdering system. Post-processing may involve blasting abrasive media onto the parts to improve their surface finish. Any remaining uncentered powder in the machine can then be reused. Now we're going to talk about some advantages and limitations of polymer powder bed fusion, which is the process to make the Wilson's airless ball. Some of the advantages include that it is support free for maximum geometrical freedom. The parts can be stacked and the entire build volume can be filled. The use of durable thermoplastic enables production of end-use parts. An increasing amount of unmelted powder material can be reused. And it is of high versatility. Nevertheless, there are some limitations, which include high cost of technology, high complexity of technology, high cost of powdered materials, difficult management of fine powder materials, and limited selection of materials. Nevertheless, it is still growing. While it is an interesting technical achievement, the practical effect will be limited 
according to 3D Printing Authority and Business Consultancy, Wooler's Associates. They say, while Wilson is to be commended for bringing this innovation to market, it is expected to have a limited practical effect. The ball will sell for $2,500, meaning that relatively few will be bucked by well-heeled aficionados of the sport. The high cost is driven by the size of the ball coupled with print speed. Also, few balls can be printed at the same time. Nevertheless, I believe it is a great advance for the sports industry because, as the Wilson's engineer said, it will remove the obstacle of reinflating the ball. Thus, the earliest basketball will have an indefinite usage period and will impose scientists and fans to also want to be involved and know more about this type of innovative technology. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it.